Hi guys, Gleeter here. So today I have another World of Warcraft video, specifically about Trinity Core. And today I've actually been working on extending the instant scripting system to support an event-based um, system, basically. Now, the reason for this is, if you've ever taken a look at the Trinity Core source and taken a look at the instant scripts, you'll see that there's massive switch statements that maintain a bunch of state as class fields, and it's very hard to get an idea or understanding of what's going on and when something's going on. So let me hop over to the code real quick and show you what I have as an example in Dire Mall right now. So I have just one line. Now this isn't a finished system, and this isn't the final product, but I just have one line here that registers an on boss creature death event for Tendris. That's his entry ID and a callback. And when he dies, it should call this method, which casts a, a spell on all players, which kills us, a death touch. So very simple, two lines of code. Now to give you an idea or understanding of what I was talking about before, let me show you what Olduwar looks like. You scroll through here, there's these massive switch cases that initialize GUIDs, which I actually do behind the scenes now. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to store these GUIDs or anything like that anymore. You got these huge switch cases on when things are created, when things die. Now this can all turn into an event-based system. And what I have right here is two lines of code. It'll scale a lot better than that. So why don't I show you what happens when Tendris dies? And if I scroll up and show you, when I first logged in and came into the instance, it should have said registering boss entry callback with an event callback. So we know it's registered. So let's go ahead and kill him. Well, when we kill him, we have a death touch cast on us. So yeah, we can see that it works. And this event base and this event based system can be extended just for all sorts of common patterns that you see throughout instances or scripting. And it also has a bunch of maps so that you can go from entry to good easier and you don't have to have uh, let me hop back over to Uluwar. So you don't have to have this thing right here. When you create a creature, you're having to store all these GUIDs manually in this massive 50 to 100 line switch statement. You don't have to do that anymore. Done behind the scenes. So that's it for today, guys. I'm going to continue extending this to support more types of events and conditions, which I'll get into in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you then.